Hey everybody, it's Matthew, also known as Mr. Domestic, here to share with you a video on English paper piecing. Today's video is going to focus on fussy cutting. You've heard of fussy cutting before, right? Basically, it's whenever you have a project that's going to involve a lot of cutting and you go to your sewing room and you're like, oh, I don't want to cut, I don't want to cut. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> fussy cutting is whenever you see like a picture or an image in a piece of fabric that you really, really, really want to integrate into your project, but you want to make sure that it's precise and looks really good. So that's what fussy cutting is. And if that's what you're here to learn, then stick around for some fun! <laughs> so I'm going to, for the project in this video, use one inch honeycomb. So I have some of my paper and I'll show you how to fussy cut this shape out. Out. And then I have an acrylic template. I got this one from Paper Pieces. I'm also going to show you how to cut your own in the video, but having an acrylic one is the best way to ensure getting the perfect fussy cut whenever you want to next level your English paper piecing projects. So as you can see in this fabric, it's got these adorable little horsies that will fit perfectly in the shape. And I'll show you how to cut that out. And then this is a different kind of fussy cutting where essentially you're looking for a pattern to repeat. Like as you can see, it doesn't fit in the shape, but what this picture cut out fussily in a project will look so amazing. So it's another way to think of fabric and fussy cutting whenever you're doing English paper piecing. And this is in a nutshell what fussy cutting looks like. This is one print by Katerina Rochella. And look, it looks like little pictures were cut out of fabric. And you see this in a lot of the projects out there on the interweb. So this is the fabric that's behind me. I just wanted to show you this, that if you don't quite understand the concept of fussy cutting, just pause this and then stare at this fabric so that you can absorb what fussy cutting actually is. So next, I'm gonna show you how to cut out your own template. So to create your own fussy cutting viewfinder per se, you're gonna need the original shape that you're trying to, to cut around. You'll need some card stock that's large enough to cut around the shape and then some, a ruler, rotary cutter, and then some kind of pen, doesn't have to be erasable. And the first thing that you're going to do is cut or trace around the original shape onto the card stock. If you do it on the non-shiny side, it's better because it will draw better. And this doesn't have to be perfect. So you can see the shape here. And then most of the acrylics, and I definitely recommend the acrylics, but if you're new to English paper piecing or strap for cash and you can't afford getting this, then this is an option for you. Most of them come with a 3 8 seam allowance. That seems to be the preference out there. I like a quarter inch, but um, for the purpose of this, I'm gonna go ahead and cut 3 8 to mirror what the acrylic has. And I'm just cutting 3 8 to the outside of the original line that I traced. And this, the more precise, the better, because you're going to cut around this when you cut your fabric, and it will help with your fussy basting or fussy gluing, especially if you're doing the shape so that they get on the paper the same way. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. But let me show you this. La 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 la. It's fun to cut. Last cut. And then now you have this part. So the outside is perfect. You don't need the ruler to cut the inside because the inside doesn't have to be perfect, perfect. And then just use your rotary cutter to cut the inside out. Dun, 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 just a couple more cuts, and then after this, you're gonna pop it out. Ta-da! Now you have your fussy cutting viewfinder. And I'll show you what it can do for you on the smaller one, the smaller shape. So here is the acrylic. I'm gonna use the acrylics because I still prefer them but then this does the same thing. It shows you what you want on the inside, and then you can cut around here. I'll just do it for you real quick to show you. that This is fussy cutting with the viewfinder. And this will last a little bit. It won't last a super long time, and that will inhibit getting precise cuts. 
Now y'all are probably screaming looking at me how I'm cutting. And you need this outside cut to be precise. So that's why this is a good starter for fussy cutting, but definitely go to the acrylics afterwards. And then see, ta-da! Now it's a fussy cut horsey, yay! Next, I'm going to show you what I look for in patterns when I'm doing the next level, next kind of uh, fussy cutting. So I'll be right back. So this is another kind of fussy cutting that I see, and I really like this, because it's like you're creating your own pattern from the fussy cutting that is different than cutting out like the object in the fussy cutting that we did earlier. And with this, what I want to do is use this shape and I'm gonna center it. I like finding shapes or patterns to fussy cut this way that has a center line or some kind of line that I can use as a guide. And I'm gonna place this on the center of the acrylic and then I'll cut around it and then I'll use that center line again whenever I fussy glue and I'll show you what I mean by fussy glue or fussy basting which helps get the next level kind of fussy cutting with your English paper piecing so I cut around this I tried to cut away from myself and there's this one Okay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna cut out four of these and then show you how to fussy glue or fussy base to make the pattern look as symmetrical as possible. Now I'm to the final piece of the four that I'm going to cut out and I wanted to show you one final tip that I do to make sure that each piece is the same or as similar as possible before I get to the gluing. And I have one of the four and I placed it over the repeat in the pattern just so that I can make sure to get approximately the same cut whenever I use the viewfinder or the uh, acrylic and now I place the acrylic over it and then I do my cuts and this gets it pretty close to the same as I fussy cut but then fussy gluing is the next step that makes sure that all of the shapes look the same on the paper and that kind of makes it a next level and it's a choice that you can make. Sometimes you want them all to be the same, sometimes you want them to be a little different. It just depends on what you're looking for in the overall aesthetic. So here you can see I have my four pieces and now I'm going to fussy glue or fussy baste the paper onto this and as you can see the center line and why I do this is because even though I try to make them as perfect as possible, so for some reason, if, especially if I'm cutting multiples of the same pattern, they all turn a little different. So I'll try to find something within the pattern that I can use as a guide on one of the points. And I found it here. Like I'm using the center lines. And then there's like a white space right here. And I'm gonna make sure that this point reaches the white space on all of the fussy gluing. So now I'm gonna glue this and I'll show you how I glue my, my honeycombs. I'll show you on the other side what I was talking about with that white space. So here, there's a white space right there, the edge of it, and it's, this is getting like really nitpicky, but it's a, a tip that if you wanna next level your your fussy cutting, that this is something that you can do. So I'm gonna look for this white space on all of them whenever I fussy glue them. And as you can see, this one's a little askew. And I'm looking for that white space that the corner is getting right there on the white space. You may or may not be able to see it. But whatever fabric you're, look, you're using, you'll be able to find something like that too. And I'll glue this one and then show you that they're gonna be pretty similar. And see? how similar they are because of that white space there, that white space there. And then, ooh, ooh, I'm gonna do the other four and then I'll show you all of them put together in the end. Yay! Okay, I just finished stitching it up on the back and now I'm gonna look at it. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Ooh, see the neato pattern that it made? It's not perfect, which, eh, you know, I'm fine with that. It's totally fine. But the more precise you try to be, the better the overall aesthetic will be. Then look at this little pattern in the center. Like, I didn't even realize it was going to make that. So it creates a, another pattern with the fabric that's like a next level beyond kind of fussy cutting that I really like. And then if you combine this kind of fussy cutting with this, 
Ooh, look at that. It's like the horses are running out of the abyss or something. It's like, <laughs> yay. <laughs> yay yay we did fussy cutting today and it was fun right so now it's your choice to determine how much or how little of it that you want to integrate into your next english paper piecing project but most definitely it will make it next level i promise so if you enjoyed this video or you got a tip or a laugh or two make sure to give it the thumbs up keep it positive y'all mr domestic out <laughs>